Speaking of the Sierra, a group of divers in Lake Tahoe now on a mission to clean up the trash. Yeah, the nonprofit is combing through the entire 72 miles of shoreline and what might be the biggest cleanup there ever. Here's CBS 13's Ryan Hill. It's more than a casual dive into the blue waters of Lake Tahoe. It's an underwater mission searching for something other than buried treasure. So we've all come together to do a trash cleanup around the entire circumference of Lake Tahoe. Three days a week for the next six months, wetsuits with the group Clean Up the Lake will comb 72 miles of Lake Tahoe shoreline to get rid of any trash they can find. In their first three dive days, they've already collected 800 pounds. When you're actually out there and you're doing something to help the environment, to help your community, it feels good. The group using $250,000 in grants and donations to turn their vision of a trash-free Tahoe into reality. Just one one day out there to see the trash that comes out in one dive and the tires and beer cans and everything. So you're talking tens of thousands of pounds of trash is, is what we're estimating. It's going to be amazing. Cleaning up for a cause and something they care deeply about. And we all know and love Lake Tahoe. And so we really, really want to protect. Ahead, see what a man waiting at a subway station did when he saw an armed attacker going after a woman. And the Friends reunion is almost here. What we know and a look back at some of the memorable guest stars. Seventeen years after their final episode, the cast of Friends is reuniting. And Entertainment Tonight's Kevin Frazier is getting us ready. Hi, Kevin. Curtis and Elizabeth, you're right. You hit it on the head. Their new special, The One Where They Get Back Together, starts streaming on HBO Max on Thursday. So in preparation to get you all set, E.T. is taking a look back at our favorite Friends guest stars. Hey, how you doing? Don't! <laughs> 
it was so great. It was such a, a, a an indelible moment in my life, <laughs> being at Central Perk and working with Jennifer Aniston. But the person who I had all my scenes with, who was just an angel, was Lisa Kudrow. Being here with all of you in event room C, <laughs> I feel so lucky. I'm sorry. Have I made this evening uncomfortable? But people still are like, oh, my kid is watching that show now, and they love you on that show. And I'm like, I look the same, don't I? There were 191 guest stars in all, including a couple of Jennifer's exes. She was breaking up with then-boyfriend Tate Donovan when he played her love interest on the show. Sometimes we'd slip, and they go, oh, well, hold a second. You guys don't know each other. I'm like, right, 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 right. I don't want to get in trouble with, with Courtney. <laughs> but she does have soft lips. Tom Selleck shaved his stash when he did his 10-episode arc on the show. Wow, your lip went bald. <laughs> that cast was family. Everybody was sitting on everybody's lap, Courtney on somebody's lap. You can't spell friends without Hannigan. No one else has a name like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I never quite could get over the fact that I was sitting How in Central cute. Perk. Hey, and tune into ET tonight because we are with the cast before their emotional reunion. They're spilling details about the special and how it feels to be back together after 17 years. You don't want to miss it. For Entertainment Tonight, I'm Kevin Frazier. A lot of great moments on that show. Well, you can watch Entertainment Tonight weeknights at 630 right here on CBS 13. Returning to real life, no Zoom calls, no masks. The top products many skipped on during the pandemic now flying off store shelves. And your best chance to see a rare lunar sight when you can catch something called the Super Flower Blood Moon.
Welcome back here on a Tuesday. Temperatures running in the 80s. Depending on where you are, you might be in the mid 80s, like around Marysville, where we've got uh, dew point of 40 degrees, winds out of the southwest at about eight miles per hour. So if you want to get away from the toasty temperatures that we're forecasting tomorrow here in the valley, which would be the upper 80s pushing to the low 90s, you're going to have to go right up here to the Sierra, and that's where we're going to end up with actually a pretty nice looking day. So for the most part, we're going to go with a gusty evening tonight. Some of those gusts are going to be pushing 30 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour. By the time we get tomorrow morning, it's cold. I mean, morning lows are down with calm winds at almost freezing. And then by the afternoon, it's going to be a pretty nice afternoon with plenty of sunshine. Maybe a couple of clouds toward the end of the day and temperatures running in the upper 60s and lower 70s. We're going to have a look at the next four days as we head toward the big holiday weekend here in just about 10 minutes. Elizabeth. Thanks, Dave. Tomorrow, May 26th, is the only total lunar eclipse of 2021, and it'll be known as quite the name Super Flower Blood Moon. Gets its cool name from the color red, as well as the size and the month of the eclipse. And moon lovers here in the western U.S. will be able to see it just before dawn. Quite a sight. Well, LEGO has just revealed its largest set ever. It's for building a world map. It includes 11,000 pieces, and when it's all done, the map is more than two feet high and about three feet wide. The set comes with a white Lego frame and two hanging elements to showcase your masterpiece when you're all done. The world map costs about $250, and it'll be available on Lego's website starting June 1st. Well, the masks are coming off, and for many, that means it's time to face a familiar goal trying to look our best. For months, it's been PJs in front of Zoom for a lot of people or face coverings when we're out in public. Well, all that is about to change, and the proof is in what we're now buying. Here's CBS 13's Tony Lopez. We're doing great here in the store. Customers at Top Line Cosmetics and Fashion are looking to move on from the COVID gloom and glam it up again. People are buying clothes and they're buying makeup. Sales of lipstick and other beauty products plummeted during the pandemic for obvious reasons with people staying home and covering up with masks. But now they're bracing for a cosmetic comeback. We're going to restock um, pretty soon, too, just because it's going to be a big change starting next month. And shoppers, yes, are looking to finally ditch those pandemic pajamas. We've seen an increase in ourselves in clothing, so that's a good sign. I feel like people are really starting to come out. From deodorant, teeth whiteners and razors to condoms. Large retailers are seeing a double-digit increase in sales of personal care items compared to this time last year when... Top sellers were toilet paper and hand sanitizer. We're coming out of hibernation and we really want to look good. As Relationship expert Joey Garcia says it shows people are ready to reunite. We're hungry to connect. We're human and that's how we're constructed. But even with a fresh new look, some may still be a bit rusty when it comes to going out. There are going to be some people who are coming out of this um, pandemic time so desirous of connecting with others that they're going to come on too strong and scare people away. But nothing's more scary than the beast of the year plus we just went through. Many feel it's time to focus on the beauty. I feel like things are starting to get back to normal. It's not all fashion and beauty. The Wall Street Journal also says alarm clock sales have doubled as people return to work and luggage sales are up about 400%. A New York man waiting at a subway station jumped in when he saw somebody armed attacking a woman. And now he's sharing why he helped as others stood by and watched. Reporter Jessica Easthope has the story. As trains rattled past, Sean Conaboy decided to lower the volume in his headphones. The song, Desolation Row by Bob Dylan. He'd listened to it countless times, but this time was different. And the volume was so low that I was able to hear the victim scream. There's a lyric in the song, you're in the wrong place, my friend. The last Wednesday, Sean Conaboy was in the right place. Where he had produced the knife because it's out when he goes to attack. He sprung into action in a way that's become uncommon when these all too common attacks happen. And then you came running from this way. Conaboy, who's a native New Yorker and parishioner of St. Michael's in Sunset Park, is being called a good Samaritan, a term rooted in faith to describe someone who stops to help when others stand by. I never imagined it would be so heinous and so violent, but that was what I experienced and I had to act. To not act would be an option, 
but I'm sure I wouldn't have been able to live with myself. That, that must be the camera that caught the incident. The chilling surveillance video from inside the Union Square subway station, a man with a knife stalking potential victims. And when he chose one, Conaboy said something in him took over. What was going through your mind when you made that tackle? This woman is being fatally assaulted with a knife. I had to stop it. I could see the knife. Wielding the knife in a way Conaboy says showed he wanted to kill 54-year-old Kelly Daly. The man who put him on high alert went back for more. But what's most horrifying is that once I tackled him and separated him from the victim. He went back to her. He went back at her, yeah. Conaboy says his and, faith uh, has everything to do with his action that day. Well, the victim is expected to make a full recovery and called, thanking him for saving her life. No pool, no problem. The new tool letting you take a dip in a backyard oasis, and it's only a click away. And hi, everyone. I'm Tony Lopez coming up in just minutes right here on the CBS 13 News at 5. Attack in the air. New details for you on a passenger's violent attack during a flight from Sacramento. We're hearing from one of the people on board about the assault. Plus, we have new video just in of the suspect. Also ahead, a surge in students taking summer school this year. Now some teachers are getting a big pay bump. Where's that money coming from? And what about districts not offering it? We're getting answers. And you can't go anywhere in downtown Sacramento without seeing them, right? Those e-scooters. But there are some surprising rules of the road most kids are following. Those stories and more in just minutes from now on CBS 13 News at 5. Welcome back. Spectacular day across Northern California. Fair skies out there. Not a lot of wind. Temperatures running right around the low to mid 80s, which is exactly where we should be for this time of the year. And guess what? 
It ends tomorrow because this area of cool air that's helping us out is going to get on out of here. Temperatures are going to start to rise. So here's a look at what you can expect for your Wednesday. Strong sea breeze over toward the coast. Sunny and pleasant here in the Central Valley. Sunny and warm, as you can see there, upper 80s and low 90s in the Central Valley. Looking good in the foothills. Some clouds late in the day and about 70 over toward the Sierra. And this is what we have for the next four days. Very warm and then gusty late in the day. And then we're up and down and up and down. So are we headed down for the holidays? holiday weekend or up. I'm going to give you a hint. We may be flirting with triple digits. How many of those will we see? We'll talk about it coming up. Curtis. All right, Dave, thanks. We got some breaking wind news. The feds and the state are building wind farms off the California coast. The on the water wind turbines are going up off Morro Bay and near Humboldt County. Combined, the two could eventually produce enough energy to power 1.6 million homes. Foster Farms facing a $181,000 fine after that deadly COVID outbreak at its California plants. Nine workers died at the facility in Merced County, three at the plant in Fresno. This is one of the steepest fines leveraged during the pandemic. The company is expected to appeal. The city of Davis is celebrating Bike Month with the addition of some new signs. They're posted throughout South and East Davis along the 11 mile bike loop and the new wayfinding signs as they're called are part of a citywide bike and pedestrian project to help improve navigation. Well, you've heard of vacation rentals, but what about paying to take a dip in a stranger's pool? An app started two years ago is now expanding to the Sacramento area, allowing people to use someone else's pool like it's their own. CBS 13's Vuena Jones explains how it all works. Quiet, private. In each home Jennifer Huey's bought, there is always one thing on her list. The criteria was always to have a pool. Now she's turning her cool backyard pool into cold hard cash. I, I don't need to use the pool 24 hours a day. It's called Swimply. Similar to a vacation rental, instead of renting your house, customers pay to use your private pool. Swimmers at Huey's coming as far as San Francisco to take a dip. I specifically cater to people who have dogs because I'm, I'm a dog person. It's fenced. They don't have to worry about E. coli like in the rivers. Around 30 hosts are located throughout the Sacramento region. Rates range anywhere from 15 to more than $100 per hour depending on the amenities. Sacramento resident and Swimpley's vice president saw a huge boost in bookings in 2020 due to COVID shutdowns. And it's only growing more than tripling reservations this year. Our slogan is escape locally and that turned out to be pretty spot on for you know this year what happened was a lot of people were looking for really fun ways to spend their time in their neighborhoods last year swimply saw a four thousand percent growth with hosts across the u.s canada and australia i don't think this is just a covid phenomenon i think that there just hasn't been this idea where you could access these spaces in this manner Top hosts make enough to pay off their pool at more than $40,000. Extra cash helps to be able to pay the bills. Sure does. All right. Well, Swimbly plans to expand their platform by the end of the year to include other activities like basketball and tennis court rentals as well. Now, the CBS 13 News at 5 starts with breaking news. And that breaking news, new body cam video just released of a police shooting in Calaveras County after a deputy was ambushed and a hostage was taken. The suspect was shot and killed and that hostage wounded. CBS 13's Marley Ginter is in the newsroom walking us through this video. Marley. Oh, Tony and Elizabeth, the video extremely intense. And I do want to warn you, it can be disturbing. So listen in as you hear the tense moments leading up to gunfire. And you can hear that right there, the gunfire as you hear them shooting the shots right there. Now, if you listen in closely to the video, you also hear someone saying, I love you, babe. Now, when I listen into that video, it appears that that is the the suspect, 47 year old Mark Lavea, who is saying that actually to his wife through the officers. Now, you did hear the officer several times telling him to put up his hands, and then you hear someone screaming off the top of their lungs, don't do it. And that is when you hear all of those strings of gunfire. The suspect was hit. He 
Officers say that uh, you do hear an officer ask if the um, hostage was hit as well, and then another officer does answer yes as they start working on a tourniquet. Now, according to the sheriff's office, a deputy shot Levea, which caused him to separate from the hostage. But after he fell, investigators say Levea got back up and appeared to fire off a shot toward the deputies before being shot again and was then pronounced dead at the scene. This new video really shedding light on a terrifying situation, Tony. Yeah, no doubt, Marley. Thanks for the update. Live in the newsroom. Let's go to Stanislaw County now. A 17 year old shot by a sheriff's deputy after a chase has died. The sheriff's office says the teen led them on a pursuit through Modesto and that at one point tried to use his car as a weapon against deputies. Four other teens who were in the car at the time claim that's not true. The sheriff's office says it will release body camera video of the incident once it's compiled. Two people arrested in Placer County accused of trying to run over a CHP officer. The sheriff's office says the couple was stopped overnight. They were found to have nine outstanding warrants between the two of them. But they say the man took off, leading authorities on a chase from I-80 to Highway 49. They were eventually taken into custody. It was one year ago today a former Minneapolis police officer killed George Floyd while people watched in protest. Floyd's family traveled to Washington today, meeting with President Biden and members of Congress to echo those calls for change. On the anniversary of George Floyd's death, nine minutes and 29 seconds of silence. Each moment marks the time Floyd spent under the knee of a former Minneapolis police officer convicted of murder. I can breathe. Floyd's final words, now a rallying cry recognized around the world. As protesters demand racial justice and an end to police brutality. I can't breathe. It's become now almost the language of the streets. President Joe Biden hoping to cement Floyd's legacy into law. Legislation to tackle systemic misconduct in police departments. To restore trust between law enforcement and the people they're entrusted to serve and protect. Floyd's family meeting with the president and members of Congress as the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act appears stalled in the Senate. This, this will be one of the best things that you can pass across America. Uh, people shouldn't have to live in fear. While the president wanted a deal done by the anniversary of Floyd's death, the two lead Senate negotiators are optimistic a bipartisan agreement on police reform can be reached soon. We have to make progress here. We cannot lose this moment. Floyd's family also encouraged. They say the nation and the world has changed in the year since George Floyd died. I think things have changed. I think that, uh, that it's moving slowly, but it's making progress. Shattering the peaceful remembrance today, gunshots were fired hours before a massive gathering in Minneapolis at the intersection where Floyd died. Uh, what you saw was an Associated Press reporter. He was live as it happened. They wanted this bill of comprehensive police reform uh, to be... Uh, to... Just got to be careful here with some gunshots. Excuse us, excuse us. Yeah, quite a few gunshots. Police say a man who they believe was injured in the shooting later turned up at a hospital. Today marks 25 years since the disappearance of Stockton's Kristen Smart. The family traveled to San Luis Obispo over the weekend to honor her memory and thank the investigators who have worked to find her. Smart was a 19-year-old college freshman when she was last seen walking to her Cal Poly dorm with fellow student Paul Flores. He was charged with her murder last month. His father is charged with hiding Smart's body, which has yet to be found. Both men are scheduled to return to court next month. A police budget battle brewing in Sacramento. The city council is discussing it right now. In fact, the Police Officers Association is asking for another $36 million on top of the current $166 million proposal to get dozens more officers on the streets. They say it's needed. But some city leaders want to pay for things like youth programs instead of law enforcement. A final decision is expected sometime next month. Council already voted today to approve a new plan to crack down on illegal fireworks ahead of the 4th of July. They amended the original proposal to fine property owners where illegal fireworks are being used, requiring evidence that the host knew it was happening. All fireworks would be banned after 11 p.m. The initial fine would be 1000 bucks and go up to $5,000 for multiple violations.
Placer County will be able to enjoy looser restrictions three weeks before the state's reopening tier system comes to an end. Placer moved from the red tier to the orange tier today. The only move in our region out of the eight counties still in the red tier statewide. Six are here in Northern California, including Sacramento, Stanislaus and San Joaquin counties. With the interrupted school year wrapping up, some parents say they're desperate to get, get kids back on track before the fall. And now some districts are enticing teachers to stick around this summer with a pay bump. CBS 13's Marissa Perlman is live in West Sacramento this afternoon to explain. Marissa. Yeah, we now know more students are signing up here at River City High School with almost 400 kids enrolled in summer school already, and there's a wait list for some classes. And with more students, districts are telling us there's a need for more teachers. The kids lost a lot of time during COVID-19. River City High School parent Evelyn Bennett says she's seen kids in the district fall behind. And first grade Washington Unified teacher Jessica Pagan says those who needed extra support just couldn't get it this year. There was a noticeable gap in academics um, throughout all of the subject areas. And now because of that, summer school is filling up. Parents eager to get their kids a spot for in-person learning. Summer school would be the ideal thing for somebody that really needs it. Superintendent Karen Shower with Galt Unified is launching a first of its kind summer school program, extending the school year for three weeks for grades K through eight. In my 40 years uh, as an educator, I don't recall ever a time that we offered full day summer program ever, but we never had a pandemic. And with a full day for Galt teachers, that means more pay, almost double the normal rate at $500 a day. Elk Grove and SAC Unified say they're offering up to $80 an hour. It's partly why Julie de Agua rushed to sign up to teach for the first time ever. It definitely, you know, is a nice little chunk of change. Well, the programs are funded by a state grant called the Expanded Learning Opportunities Grant Program. We now know other districts like San Juan, which are bigger than Galt, have said they're not paying teachers to stick around for the summer. And even though the demand to get a seat in the classroom is still high, so what will summer school look like? We'll bring you those answers right here at 6 o'clock. We'll see you then, Marissa. Thanks, live in West Sacramento tonight. There may soon be a new vaccine for preteens and teenagers. Moderna says its vaccine is safe for kids ages 12 to 17. The company says out of 3,700 children in its clinical trials, there were no COVID cases in those receiving the vaccine. Moderna plans to ask the FDA for emergency use authorization. Right now, Pfizer is the only vaccine given the green light to use on kids. State lawmakers are considering a major change for Davis and other UC campuses, slashing the number of out-of-state students. The proposal would reduce out-of-state students from 18% to 10% over the next decade. This would ultimately allow nearly 4,600 more California students to secure freshman seats each year. But the UC system would miss out on the out-of-state tuition, so the state would have to compensate. And you might be wondering what the breakdown is for California and out-of-state students at UC Davis. Well, we're getting answers. For 2020, UC Davis admitted 21,000 California students as freshmen alongside 4,700 out-of-state students and 11,000 international students. The campus says it's enrolled the most California residents of any UC school since 2010. Stick around, your news at 5 is just getting started. Coming up, hidden rules of the road. Why kids riding e-scooters are breaking the law. Kurtz? And crunching the numbers. How much more it'll cost to fill up your tank this holiday weekend. Plus, what's that rash? Google wants to help. All right, speaking of the holiday weekend, the unofficial start to summer is going to feel a lot like summer. So are we going to see our first triple digits of 2021? We'll talk about it coming up. Dave, thanks. Happening now, live look from Rockland, where a group is gathering for a march pushing for police reform as a way to honor the life and legacy of George Floyd, who was killed one year ago today. We'll be right back.
Welcome back now to an attack in the air. A Southwest flight attendant attacked by a passenger on a flight from Sacramento to San Diego. That flight attendant took a punch from a female passenger, losing two teeth as a result. CBS 13's Renee Santos is live at Sac International Airport with new photos and details of that attack. Renee. Yeah, witnesses say that flight attendant was punched during a flight that left from Sacramento on its way to San Diego. This is video just into our newsroom showing the accused attacker being escorted off of the plane by police. The first time we are seeing who this female passenger was, Viviana Quinones, a woman on that fight, flight shared the video saying all passengers were told to remain in their seats following the attack. Now let's show you pictures of the flight attendant who was punched. You can see the woman with blood streaming down the side of her face. The owner of McCoonies was on the flight Sunday and snapped those photos. The airline tells us a passenger repeatedly ignored instructions to put up their tray table and buckle their seatbelt and then became verbally and physically abusive while the flight was still in the air right before landing. Tara Arai says he heard yelling and then saw the swing. And I turn around and they start shoveling each other. And next time I saw, don't touch me, they start yelling, right? So that's when I turn and said, let me take the video. And then as soon as I turn around, the lady stood up and pow, and then she just knocked her out on the floor. Police were eventually requested to meet the plane and ultimately took that passenger into custody. One picture shared with us shows that flight attendant taking off the flight in a wheelchair. No word on her conditions or what charges that passenger does face, but we are certainly digging into the story, especially who that accused attacker was. We'll have more of that coming up tonight at 10. All right, Renee, what a wild scene. Thanks live at the airport. Close call for a skydiver in Southern California. Poor guy. Take a look. His parachute got stuck in power lines, leaving him dangling about 30 feet off the ground. This is in the Lake Elsinore area. Power company shut off the lines, used their bucket lift to lower the man to safety. He was taken to the hospital a bit embarrassed and with some minor injuries. A motor malfunction left the tower bridge stuck for several hours today. Caltrans says a backup motor gave out after the bridge was raised to let a passing boat through and they had to swap out another motor to get it back down again. Well, you can't walk anywhere in downtown Sacramento these days without seeing them. E-scooters are everywhere. But there are some rules in place many aren't aware of before they get scooting. CBS 13's Heather Jansen getting answers on the trend, including what you need to ride one. If it's electric, electric skateboards, electric scooters, electric bikes, electric unicycles, one. You can bet Zach Arnell has tried it. Minimal effort, just a little bit of balance. You can go as fast as you can. So I'm a huge adrenaline junkie. It's super fun. An adrenaline rush for many, but one some law enforcement agencies hope to put the brakes on. I haven't seen any regulations yet. Educating, not yet enforcing, but reminding riders of the rules of the road. California state law says when riding these scooters, the speed limit is only supposed to hit 15 miles per hour and anyone under 18 needs a helmet. But to many, the biggest legal surprise, needing a driver's license to operate, the same kind you need to hit the road in your car. I had no idea. That Jay among those shocked riders. When he rents one of these scooters, he says the app doesn't ask for it. And your debit card information and I mean, you're good to go. He says it may be why more and more he's seen underage riders around town. Younger kids that shouldn't be on them that are going to be, you know, driving them recklessly. They, they can hurt somebody, you know, it can, can cause a lawsuit. This trend leading the city of Sacramento to try and update their own local laws next month in an attempt to curb underage riding. The city says new ordinance additions could include driver's license scans every six months and regular license audits, while also continuing to educate the public. For Jay, he's hopeful the change could make a difference. You want people to be safe, you know, because they can be dangerous. The city of Sacramento also has free Scootin' 101 classes for the public once a month to educate riders.